Hello and welcome to Business Life. Coming up in this bulletin, banking consultant says increasing monetary policy rate to 28% is a prudent decision to control inflation. Simple terms, inflation targeting means that these two things should move in tandem. Inflation, inflation rate and interest rate. So as inflation rate moves up, interest rate should also move up. Managers of China Mall, Palace Mall and other shopping centers at Spintex arrested for issuing fake VAT invoice. What will happen is that definitely they have been arrested, so somebody will have to build them. But beyond that, we are looking forward to prosecution, because it looks like they are not taking it serious. And total mobile money transactions hit a record 1.07 trillion cities in 2022, despite the existence of the electronic transaction levy. We have details of these and many others lined up for you. Please stay. Grateful you could stay with us. I am Pius Kojo Baka. Let's begin business from the Bank of Ghana because the cost of borrowing is expected to go up after the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank increased its policy rate by 1% to 28%. The policy rate is the rate at which the Central Bank lends to commercial banks in the country. Now addressing the media, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ennis Addison, noted that the action is needed to deal with inflationary pressures and also help resolve the current challenges facing the economy. The governor noted that the increase was needed to complement efforts by government to fast-track the process in stabilizing the economy. The MPC believes that these measures will help restore fiscal and debt sustainability and bring down inflation as well as help stabilize the currency. In the interim, the MPC sees the need to remain vigilant and moderate liquidity in the system to underpin the macroeconomic adjustments taking place to drive inflation on a downward path. Dr. Ernest Addison also ruled out suggestions that Bank of Ghana should look at a fixed exchange rate regime because of the recent challenges with the Ghana city in the last quarter of 2022. Flexible foreign exchange uh, system has worked very well for Ghana since 1986 when we liberalized the market. Now that framework assumes that your macroeconomic fundamentals will be strong and there have been years that that framework has delivered exchange rate stability. Even in 2021 the city was stable. The year before that, 2019, 2018, you were able to keep the city relatively stable, maximum 5%, 6% depreciation for the whole year. So yes, if something goes wrong with the underlying economy and you see a, a much higher depreciation, you don't go back and say, oh, the framework is the problem. The problem is not the framework. On support for banks that will be hit by the debt exchange program, this is what the governor had to say. On the basis of, of that exercise, uh, the bank came out with uh, regulatory reliefs, which we thought would help them deal with the impact 
on liquidity and capital, we agree to reduce the cash reserve ratio from 14% to 12% on domestic currency deposits, reduce the cash reserve ratio from 13 to 12% on foreign currency deposits. These measures give liquidity back to the banks. It addresses the issue of the impact of liquidity. We also dealt with the issue of capital by reducing the capital conservation buffer by 3%. So the capital adequacy ratio was reduced from 13 to, to 10%. And even some of the technicalities surrounding the debt exchange uh, in terms of de-recognition losses and all of that, we agreed to have them restore its impact on capital over a four-year period. So there are a lot of things that the Bank of Ghana has uh, agreed to do. Uh, to help the banks deal with the impact of the domestic debt exchange on capital and, and liquidity. Dr. Addison has also been giving details on Ghana getting the IMF financial support by the end of the first quarter of this year. Gone very far. You are aware that we've gone very far with the staff level agreement. Uh, we hopefully should be seeing the end of the domestic debt exchange. Uh, we are also making progress on the external side, on the external debt restructuring. The necessary committees have all been formed. And we are confident that by the end of the first quarter, we should be able to get a disbursement from the IMF to help augment the foreign exchange resources of the central bank. So. I don't foresee a situation where, you know, we would be in that kind of trouble. The governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, was optimistic that the debt exchange program will rather help stabilize the economy and deal with the current pressures on the local currency. Now, reacting to the increase in the policy rate, banking consultant Nano Tui Champon says the move is in the right direction. My concerns um, situate within the model that they are using, and that model is inflation targeting. And, and in simple terms, inflation targeting means that these two things should move in tandem, inflation, inf inflation rate and interest rate. So as inflation rate moves up, interest rate should also move up to calm down the situation and bring inflation down. Now, we've been practicing this since the 2000s, you know, and it has helped because we have had instances where inflation has come as low as single digit, interest rate has come as low as almost single digit, and so I don't think this is the time to ditch that policy and go for an alternative policy. We, we've got no option but to stick to it until, you know, um, the, the end, which will be until we are able to achieve the purpose for which we opted for inflation targeting. There was one question that I asked the, the, the governor about the, the local currency's performance, and he again sought to justify this whole inflation targeting framework being result-oriented, and the blips we saw in December where the currency went down, appreciated sharply or gained sharply, and then it went down. Some are saying that maybe the time has come for us to look at more of a fixed rate and defend it as well. The governor seemed not to support those who are pushing that argument. What do you make of this? Um, I think I'll side with him because the fixed rate uh, went through the roof as far back as 1953 after the end of the Second World War and then they, they got together in Bretton Woods and decided that, okay, you can have uh, a rate, one of the two, either fixed or floating or uh, a semi uh, type of thing. We opted for the floating, uh, it's not fixed. So I think it's too late in the day for us now to go back and say, no, we want to go for fixed rate because each of them has, has their benefits and limitations.
And the uh, way to control inflation is when you are in fixed rate, it becomes uh, difficult to control inflation. So I think in the uh, floating, semi-floating stage, it's good for us to continue going on. I wouldn't panic and go for the fixed rate, which you'll find in very, very limited regimes in the world. Tightening policy rate signals a very interesting impact on the cost of credit. And for many, this is not what we should be expecting this time as well. Don't you think that maybe at worst we should have kept the rate on change because of the impact of a hike on the cost of credit? No, the model, the model works on the basis that as long as inflation is rising, interest rate has to keep rising to check inflation to come down. So they, couldn't, they didn't have the option and saying that because cost of credit is now around 40%, we should keep it down. Rather, they moderated it because I think the expectation would have been by 2 or 3%. So the 1% is a moderate, moderately low figure, the minimum that they could go to to uh, fit into the inflation target. I know Twitch and Paul with my colleague George Yafre in that interview there. Now, the Bank of Ghana says it has reached an agreement with the Finance Ministry to commit to zero financing of this year's budget and subsequent ones. The proposed macroeconomic policy is a precondition for the country securing a fund program from the IMF. Now, speaking at the launch of the 60th anniversary celebration by the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, Head of Banking Supervision at the Bank of Ghana's OSEGC said the move is also necessary to contain the country's rising debt as well as control inflation. With inflation currently at 54.1%, tight monetary policies are expected to contain the persistent price shocks in the economy and ease inflationary pressures. Monetary financing of the government deficits, which was pursued to prevent domestic defaults arising from Systemic auction, auction failures during 2022 will end under the program. To achieve this, the Bank of Ghana and the Ministry of Finance will commit to zero financing of the budget in 2023 and beyond. The implementation of these prudent macroeconomic policies is expected to trigger a disinflation path and downward trends in the policy rate as well as restore the country's reserve buffers to at least three months of import cover by end 2025. When inflation decelerates to single digits, we expect real interest rates to, to be between 3 to 4 percent and nominal interest rates to range between 11 to 12 percent over the entire course of the program. You're still watching Business Life with me, Pius Kojubaka. Now, managers of some shopping centers on the Springtex Road in the Greater Accra region have been grabbed by the officers of the Ghana Revenue Authority for issuing fake value added tax invoices. The shops include China Mall, Sendam Shopping Center, Palace Mall, and Second Cup Coffee. The exercise was undertaken by the joint team from the GRA and the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service. Now, the exercise is part of moves by the GRA to boost revenue mobilization through enforcing the tax laws. Commissioner for Domestic Revenue at the GRA, Edward Jambra, has been addressing journalists. Uh, the China Mall, they were not issuing the EVAT invoice. Then Palace Mall, they are also issuing uh, uh, receipts with duplicate signature of the Commissioner General. And then we have Snyder Shopping Center. They are also issuing non-EVAT invoice. And then we have Fresh First Limited, that's second cap. They are also not issuing EVAT invoice. All these places are centered at uh, Spintex. The operation is a continuation of the electronic VAT enrollment system, which was introduced by the authority in the last quarter of 2022. According to the Commissioner for Domestic Revenue and the Ghana Revenue Authority, Edward Jambra, some of the companies that have been engaged to begin with the process have compromised the system and acting contrary to the law. Some of these taxpayers 
who have been hooked on, who are supposed to have been hooked on to the Commissioner General's invoicing system, are not fully complying with the directive. And uh, what we saw was that some of them were issuing invoices outside the system. And uh, as a result, these are infraction. These are, uh, they have fractured the law. Managers that were affected by today's exercise include China Mall, Sneda Shopping Center, Palace Mall, Second Cup Coffee, all on the Spintex Road and ShopRite at the Junction Mall. Meanwhile, manager in charge of enforcement for Accra at the Ghana Revenue Authority, Joseph Amman, disclosed that all the managers arrested will be made to face the law court to defend themselves. We have brought them to our customs head office. We are going to take their statement and then the CID will continue with the investigation and then we'll see what happens next. So after taking their statements, like you say, the CID is going to do investigation. Whilst doing the investigation, what will be happening to them? What will happen is that definitely they have been arrested. So somebody will have to build them. But beyond that, we are looking forward to prosecution. Because it looks like they are not taking it serious. Because we have just started a new process and already look at what is happening. Probably they want us to buy a teeth at them before they do the right thing. And that we shall surely do. We are looking forward to seeing some of them in court. The exercise is expected to continue until all selected shops for EVAT system complied with. And to one of our headline stories, total mobile money transactions hit a record of 1.7 trillion cedis in 2022 despite the existence of the electronic transaction levy that's according to the january 2022 summary of economic and financial data by the bank of ghana well this is compared with about 902.5 billion cedis recorded in 2022 there is more in this report the growth in mobile money transactions is about 10 percent over the 2021 period According to the data, the biggest transactions occurred in December and November, whereby 122 billion and 117 billion cities were recorded. The were fears that the implementation of the e-levy in May last year was going to affect mobile money transactions, but that has not been the case. From the data, mobile money transactions have rather been surging since the implementation of the e-levy. This indicates it will continue to grow as consumers see the platform as the easier means of payment. A recent survey by the Center for Economics and Finance and Inequality Studies revealed that many consumers do not pay e-levy despite undertaking mobile money transactions. This is still Business Life with me, Pius Kojobaka. There will be more after this break.
Hello, welcome back. In his quest to present clients and customers with a comfortable and secure driving experience, leading automobile dealer Suzuki has launched a new brand called Suzuki Swift onto the Ghanaian market. The new brand Suzuki Swift, which was locally assembled in Ghana, is a safe and reliable vehicle with an excellent exterior design that comes at an excellent price. Here is more. Authorized distributors of Suzuki Vitara. Balino and Sears, Suzuki's product line covers the full spectrum of automobile needs including saloon cars, SUVs, vans, trucks, as well as motorcycles. Suzuki seeks to provide customers an array of options, hence it has commissioned a new locally assembled Suzuki Swift in Ghana. Here is Managing Officer of Suzuki Motor Corporation, Koichi Suzuki. This assembly project marks an important milestone for both ca companies since it is the first Suzuki assembly effort with Toyota Tsusho Corporation. We have recorded excellent sales results in Africa and Ghana with the support of CFAO, an affiliated company of Toyota Tsusho Corporation. Thankfully, in 2022 calendar year, Suzuki sales in Africa has increased by 60% to 116,000 units. And also in Ghana, Suzuki sales has increased by 63% over 1,000 units. Therefore, we have positioned this alliance as a very important part of our company's strategy in Africa. We will continue to strengthen it to enhance Suzuki's presence in Africa, especially here in Ghana. Chief Operating Officer of Toyota Corporation, Africa Division, Shinichiro Otsuka, also pledged the company's commitment to supporting the development of automotive industry in Ghana. We are committed to contributing to the economy, industry, and social of the Republic of Ghana through automotive production together with Suzuki Motor Corporation. Taking this opportunity, I would like to ask the government of Ghana to further support our vehicle assembly business through the steady implementation of the Ghana Automotive Development Policy. Additionally, we are well aware of the positive st stride in the eco country's economy and we would be much encouraged to see government support for the development of the automobile market and sales which would enable us to more greatly contribute to Ghana. Caretaker Minister for the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Samuel Abujinapo, added that government is implementing a 0% VAT rate on all locally assembled vehicles in Ghana to cushion the sector. As a further show of government's commitment to the promotion of the automotive industry, we are implementing zero rating of value added tax VAT on the sale of locally assembled vehicles. In simple terms, there is no VAT on the sale of locally assembled vehicles, even to the end user. And in the coming days, we will be laying before cabinet the automotive component manufacturing policy to strengthen the incentive and regulatory framework for investment into component and parts manufacturing. The new Suzuki Swift model provides a comfortable driving experience to its customers. Now, former president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, Albert Kandapa, has urged the Institute to adopt new technologies to remain relevant in the changing trend of accounting methods. Mr. Kandapa, who is also the National Security Minister, spoke at the launch of the 60th anniversary celebrations of the Institute. The following report has more. The former president of the ICAG urged the Institute to consolidate the gains made in the past and create a future that guarantees hope for subsequent generations. According to him, failure by the Institute to adopt new technologies could lead to its retrogression. The world and the entire accountancy profession have evolved from the realms within which the founding fathers operated to a horizon, a new horizon, characterized by technological advancement in a rapid and an uncertain manner. The pursuit of sustainability for the Institute and by extension the accountancy profession must therefore be 
undergirded by our ability to embrace change arising from new technologies while adapting to new realities. Chairman of the ceremony and executive chairman of Lily Gold Oil Company Limited, Oheneba Akwisi Abiye described the institute as a trailblazer in the accounting profession after taking over from the Institute of Chartered Accountants, England and Wales. Willingly, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales supported the examinations for a decade, from 1968 to 1978, until eventually handed over. And that's it for Business Live for tonight. I am Pius Kujubaka. For more news, you can get business stories on myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Always a pleasure serving you. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.